Welcome everybody, we saw Andor, so you know what that means. Hit the intro! Five, four, three, two, one. All right, we're back from the intro. Welcome, everyone. If it's your first time here, we're two dads who love all things fandom out there, from Star Wars to Star Trek, Marvel to DC, and Middle Earth on down to Westeros. We love it all, and we want to bring all of our insights and love of all things nerdy to you, our viewers. So if that's your cup of spotchka, we're here for you, and you should definitely subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of the other amazing reviews that we have. So thanks for tuning in, guys. My name is Chris Matthews. My co-host with the most is... That's right. I'm Matt Parham, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> happy to review and our brand new Star Wars series on Disney+. Plus. That's right. So today we're reviewing Andor, episode one titled Casa, episode two titled That Would Be Me, and episode three titled Reckoning. Episode one and three are both directed by Toby Haynes and written by Tony Gilroy. Who does uh, episode two there, Matt? Uh, episode two, still written by Tony Gilroy and directed by Toby Haynes and Benjamin Karen. Benjamin Karen. So they just mixed it up for episode two. Mix it. Awesome. <laughs> Mixing it up. That's right. Um, so let's just dive right into our review. Matt, go ahead and, and take take the mic here while we still have you. Absolutely. So what a very interesting way to begin a Star Wars series. I, I felt very much like episodes one and two, I wasn't anywhere near the uh, outer or inner rim. I thought, where in the world is this happening within Star Wars? And I honestly think the series is a little bit better for it. You know, we have so many Star Wars Absolutely. out there now. And mm -hmm. they're giving us what we want out of Star Wars entertainment, stormtroopers, lightsaber battles, the Force. It's all out there if you want it in different shows. But to dis dis distinguish itself, Andor starts right off the bat with a very personalized story, and it has nothing to do with uh, the Skywalkers or barely even the Empire or the Rebels yet, really. Right. So Yeah, we barely see any of that in these three episodes. Yeah, yeah, and so we start to get hints of it in episode three, and of course this will uh, uh, bring us to the introduction of a larger world that us as fans are already aware of, but the characters that we're watching are not quite yet, especially Andor, yeah. played to perfection by Diego Luna, I would say, uh, one of the highlights of the episode. But I also got to say, since we didn't get clear indications of where the Empire is, where the Rebels are, it gave us a little bit of a chance to get to know these characters, both on the, I don't even want to say good and bad sides of the plotline, but just on different sides of the law. Um, in this mm -hmm. case, Andor starts off the series at killing two, I, I, and you're going to have to help me out with this, Chris, I didn't even know they're kind of security for some corporation, right? Yeah, so this is called the Premore Authority, and they're a security group that actually works with the Empire. And I thought um, Kyle Solar is the actor who plays Cyril Carr, Carr that man. deputy that takes this on um, basically because he wants to do the right thing. So you kind of get, like, you know, good and bad on, on both sides. It's like Diego Luna's character here, you know, the sh title show character and or – uh, starts off the show by making a really bad mistake, and those mistakes have repercussions for him throughout these three episodes. Yeah, you know, and I thought it was really interesting to include uh, this type of story here. You know, whenever we got Boba yeah. Fett, everybody was comparing it to Lawrence of Arabia. Here, and you, Chris, you might know what I'm going to say, but we can instantly start to compare this to Le Miserable. If you've seen the classic musical and the book, of Could course, be. that it's based on. Um, that does make sense. I was When I was watching this, I was getting a lot of Blade Runner vibes, as well as yeah, like, one of that. our favorite shows here, too, 
um, as well as the wire, like even I was getting some shades yeah, of the wire yeah, in I, here I with just that. seeing the, right. the background of government and, and these on the ground, you know, people. It's like it was really reminiscent of that yeah. kind of show. So completely different than anything Star Wars. It's like I like to think of this as like one of the best shows that we've gotten so far was The Mandalorian, at least in my opinion. And yeah. and I, I've talked to you about that, Matt, like how Mandalorian was able to recapture the magic of Star Wars. And I really did feel that way. And it, it was fun and exciting, accessible for everybody. Right. This show has decided not to even think about that bottle and, and create its own bottle and has done something pretty awesome. I mean, it it's it's way out there. It's it's shooting for the fence. Tony Gilroy it is bringing us something completely different and it's refreshing and I absolutely love it. Yeah, it, it is refreshing. And, and uh, like I said, the parallels to at this point, classic literature and Broadway musicals it, and other storylines, like you said, the wire is a perfect example um, simply because we're seeing the ground workers of the star Wars universe and uh, they're being fleshed out as real living characters, given back stories where spending more time with them than I'd say we'd spent with a lot of background characters in other Star Wars uh, franchise, be it uh, the books, the comics, the films, or TV shows, where we're getting the chance to meet and greet some of these people and find out how they live their lives. These people almost seem unaffected by what's going on in the larger uh, Star Wars saga, um, except for when it comes to them being upon by local law enforcement and uh, so I thought it was interesting how it all comes to uh, climax at the end of episode three um, in the reckoning yeah yeah I, I thought it was interesting and for me this is actually where the show showed a little bit of its cracks in its shiny armor um, I would have liked to see some kind of payoff whenever we got prepped for something to happen when all the people in the town were uh, clicking on different bits of metal throughout the town um, in, in a pre-established rhythm that they must have uh, talked about before right. things like this would happen. And then, of course, um, we get the pre-warning that once this, the, the sound stops, that's when um, our security forces characters need to worry and right. then I didn't see anything actually happen with that. Um, so it was a little bit disorienting. And, um, you know, we get, like you said, Kyle Soler playing uh, a great character. Um, and he he sort of took a turn for me. I mean, he gives, he gives a speech, for one. That gives us a little bit more information about how he is an inexperienced leader. Uh, because the speech that he gives to his troops comes off pretty awkward and ill-inspired um and then yeah he seems like a young brash officer that you know wants to make a name for himself that kind of right. that's how he came across to me exactly yeah and uh, a very by the book character this is uh, again what made me mm -hmm. think of le miserable um in that he is he's sort of similar to the character of harver in that um musical and that he is going to relentlessly pursue his prey, being Andor in this case, um, and he's very by the book. And he, um, of course, I think will show some kind of turn throughout the series. That's my prediction, anyway. Um, yeah, you can already see that happening. Like he, yeah, you know, he's kind of questioning what he's doing there at the end. Like it, you can exactly. tell that through his performance. Yeah, 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 he did an amazing job at the end there, and so. Uh, I thought that was a jarring moment, and um, it was one that made me respect the acting that was happening in front of us and, uh, you know, kind of brought it all um, into a little bit of a setup for whatever's coming next, this opening of Worlds, as I said uh, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was, it was refreshing. Uh, it wasn't without its flaws, but I, I did like it, and I'm excited to see what happens next. So ultimately, Chris, I think I'm going to give uh, the first three episodes as a whole here an 8 out of 10. How about you? 8 out of 10. 
Okay, well, you know, for me, I really did like the story. I love. I hats off to the cinematography too. That was done by Adriano Goldman and Jonathan Freeman. They're the cinematographers on this. Uh, just gives gives it a whole different look from Star Wars too. And I, like I said earlier, I found that very refreshing. Uh, they shot this differently. It's written differently. It looks different than Star Wars. And I love I love everything that they've been doing with this so far. And you know, whereas Book of Boba Fett, you know, we had flashbacks with that show throughout, and I didn't really feel like that worked well with with Book of Boba Fett. I thought that they should have just started when he was taken by the Tusken Raiders yeah. and just gone in chronological order for that. But I thought that this episode and these episodes all did a very good job at using and utilizing those flashbacks in a way that. You know, definitely it felt informed like, uh, you in the present. Season one of The Mandalorian, where we were getting tiny yeah. looks at him as a child. Yes. And, uh, as Casa. And I, like it. I think it works for Andor, too. And so we didn't even bring that up. Like, the whole reason why he was on that planet where he shot the guards was because he's looking for his sister. And obviously, his sister is that little girl in, in, in the flashbacks that right. he sees before they go and check out the space wreck and whatnot. So. He gets uh he actually gets captured and adopted I guess you know by by his adopted mother is Marva Andor and she's in the show played by Fiona Shaw um, and so I, I had questions about that too why why she captured him drugged him right all that stuff and hopefully we get answers to all that kind of stuff moving forward in this show we have a lot of episodes and I wonder and the only thing I'm gonna give this episode these episodes. Uh, uh, a lower rating for is the fact that this wasn't just one episode. Yeah. Like, I don't understand why they had to, to make this episode one, two, and three, especially since they released them all at the same time. This story flowed together very well. And we didn't even bring up Stellan Skarsgård. Oh my God. As soon as he, as soon as he met him in, in that like warehouse area, I like this show, like everything meshed together for me in the show. I was, I was kind of on the fence with episodes one and two, seeing where it was going. Episode three really pulled it together. And my God, when you talk about actors just bringing their A game and, and worth every penny of their performance, yeah. Stellan Skarsgård is works. just killing it. Awesome. Uh, and like the value. Everything yeah. Everything that he does from Goodwill Hunting to the Avengers. Mm -hmm. I love him. In yeah. I'll watch that anything that guy's here. <laughs> he just brought this whole thing to another level. For me, it just all clicked into place after that. Like I was in as soon, uh, with that performance that he gave in this this show. He's playing Luther Rao, and he's the one that was buying the the, uh, the black market item from Andor and then recruiting him. So yeah. I'm so happy that we're going to get to see more of this character. We're going to get to see more of Stellan Skarsgård. And I, it just, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, uh, way, way above what I was expecting from him in this show. I thought he was just going to be in there for a little bit. And I very much thought that he stole the show there right at the end yeah. of episode three. So it was really good for me. So if I'm going to give, uh, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and give the all three of these a rating. Um, same as you, Matt. So Matt was an eight out of ten. I'm probably going to give this a 9 out of 10. I very much enjoyed this. I felt this this show did affect me by the end of it. It also had a lovely little robot in there that uh, I thought was pretty cool and different design. <laughs> cool. I, I'm yeah. constantly trying to recreate that droid magic in these different shows. And I think they finally yeah. nailed it. Um, like, well, yeah, and I'm constantly surprised when they're able to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Literally. You know, so it, and they have, they have with that robot as well. So you have those little elements in there that, like, you get that little taste of stars. But like I said earlier, you know, I remind get. Remind you of kind of like a verbal or, or a, a talkative Wally, you know? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> And so, you know, while there wasn't a whole lot of Star Wars in here, I absolutely enjoyed the ride. I absolutely enjoyed the writing and the performances. It is awesome. It is something completely different. Yeah. And I love that. And we just got Obi-Wan Kenobi, which, you know, hit on all the prequel love and the original trilogy love as well. And so having something like this can take us into a completely different um, aspect of Star Wars is fantastic. Can't wait to see the next episode awesome deal so nine out of ten for me and an eight out of ten for for matt over there That's right. so it's been a lot of fun we 
we hope uh we hope to, you guys enjoyed it too let us know your comments down below what you thought of these first three episodes of andor and uh go ahead and give us a subscribe on this channel if you like our content and we will catch you again for the next andor episode next week so that's right do you have anything else before we leave there matt no check us out later this week i guess for uh the woman king episodes of the yeah. hulk rings of power and of course more house rings of the power. dragon next week Right? Right? It's going to be a lot of fun. So can't wait. Hope you join us. And from our families to yours. Have a good one. Have a good one.